Hey there, my name is Nef, I'm a Nef, and today I want to talk about a crucial part of data loading in Svelkit, which is called data invalidation. To understand data invalidation, we first got to understand how data flows in Svelkit essential. So what I have right here is my to do Svelkit thing, which I built out in a tutorial. So we can add a to do, um, I don't know, to do, or let's just go with do the dishes and we can add this to do. But as you can see, we got nothing until we actually refresh the page. Now we actually have do the dishes. Uh, same with completing the task. We can click that, but then we need to refresh again to yeah see that. So first, um, let's understand how um, data is actually loaded in Svelkit. We have our page server load or our load function right here, which fetches all the to do's from our DB. Yeah, this only runs on the server. I am not here to explain you how um, server and client works. I hope you already understand that. But the gist of it is just that this is only fetched on the server and it is returned to the client. And in our props, we receive it right here. And then we use it down here. Yeah. So this is kind of how data loading works. What we could do right now is we could, of course, refresh manually all the times. Um, also on here, we could do on updated. Um, and then location dot reload. And this should also do the laundry. Um, this actually doesn't, doesn't work. I am not sure why this does not work. Um, yeah, we could of course just do that, right? But this is kind of ugly because as you can see, if you look at this title right here, every time I refresh, the font needs to load newly, the CSS sometimes need to load, um, and all of that, it just is not a very good user experience. But what we can do, um, which is actually the recommended way of doing this is just import invalidate from app slash navigation. And then we can pass in a string right here. So how is this meant to be used? If we load our data with an API, so if we have like something like api.com slash API slash, um, to do's, this would just like rerun this fetch call and we would have new data. But since we have a load function, things work a little bit differently. So what we can do in our load function right here is go ahead and destructure depends from our object. And in here we can do depends and then we need to give this a key. Uh, let's actually do it like this. We give it a key, um, a special key, and this in our case would be fetch to do's, but this can be really everything. We could also call this query to do's. If it's something different, we can do increment count or something like this count. Um, yeah, it doesn't really play a huge role. Um, I'm just going to leave this with query to do's. And the same thing we need to do here is also run query to do's. Um, yeah, since this is kind of the same fetch call. And if we now let's go ahead and delete this. So we're not confused Do the laundry again, nothing happens. We need to refresh to get to the page. And while we're at it, let's go to our component and also put invalidate right here and do query to do's. And now if we complete this still nothing happens. Why is that? So there are basically two options we can go at because these things, these to do's, they're getting loaded from the server. Um, there's of course also plus page .ts, but since we are loading this from the server, it's not reactive by default because it's, it can't communicate in real time with the server. So to say, I think that's like the explanation. And what can we do to um, go against this? We can convert this into a reactive value um, with the dollar sign syntax. And this is pretty much the first option. Um, you could also use the derived rune. Um, I will uh, put in an example right here. Yeah, so we could do this, um, which is, in my opinion, the more beautiful option if you want to have this freedom. But we could also just completely, okay, well, I can show you this and it works just as expected like that. Pretty cool, right? Um, do the, I don't know, chores. 
um, just adds it cleanly. Um, but we kind of get the same behavior if we just go ahead and put data.todos in front of all of these and it will just work as well. Um, but I think, in my opinion, this solution is much more pretty, although it is a little bit irritating if we have this derived syntax right here or this dollar sign because we, I think we don't really get that, okay, this is actually reactive. I don't know, this is not very conveniently solved by the Svel team in my opinion. Maybe I'll also make an issue or something like that. Um, yeah, I just don't like this solution. Um, because I had to make a ton of research to find out that I actually need to do this in order to get the reactivity working properly. But yeah, I think this is a pretty uh, big step up from what I had here with just location or reload. And the user experience now is super clean, like super snappy. The count just changes. Oh, okay, well, I can't really point, but like the count up here changes immediately. So yeah, this was a little bit of a shorter video. I hope you liked it anyways, um, because this is a very cool part um, of SmellKit and um, user experience wise, I think it makes uh, so much sense. And yeah, um, I was like blown away when I found out about this and yeah, it's just very cool. Um, I have this ongoing, not really series, but I built this little app called Zenith, uh, which I made a video, which I link on top. Um, and I will do some deep dives on it. Um, so if you don't want to miss them, uh, I would recommend you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to miss out the video notification, just hit the bell and you will get notified. And yeah, I hope you liked it. Bye.